Well, I think it's all of the above. Uh, certainly, it even helps if you're going to evaluate how another country invades a country to actually have invaded a country yourself. And of course, I was a division commander during the invasion uh, of Iraq and the subsequent occupation of it. Um, obviously, I oversaw commanded forces in Afghanistan, the greater Middle East, uh, but served even in Haiti and Central America, Bosnia, and so on. Um, also studied as an academic uh, a number of conflicts over the years. It, maybe most important was that I visited Ukraine uh, on a number of occasions, all the way back the first time when it was still part of the USSR, uh, then subsequent uh, to the dissolution. So he, and even the Alta Economic Summit when it was still in Yalta in 2013, I think, was the last of those. And then multiple additional trips to Kosovo, or multiple additional trips uh, to Ukraine uh, in subsequent years, which enabled me to watch the transformation of Ukrainian forces. I actually went down to the front lines uh, in the Donbass. I went to Kharkiv. I was all over Kiev. I had a sense, for example, of the all of the metropolitan area of Kiev and predicted uh, that in advance of the invasion in an interview in the Atlantic, that Russia would not be able to take Kiev, much less control it. Um, at a time when many others were saying, of course, that Russia was going to make short work, at least of the eastern part of the country, perhaps everything east of the Dnipro River. But I'd watched the transformation of Ukrainian forces. I had some sense of the commitment, uh, some sense of their assessment of this as their war of independence, if you will, their fierce uh, intent, determination, and also real skill, um, mechanical ability, IT skills, uh, their ability, you know, we call them the ultimate MacGyver. They can make anything work. They can adapt, you know, a missile that normally hangs off an F-16 and, and put it on a MiG-29. So it's all of those factors together. And of course, even time, you know, as the director of the CIA, assessing the capabilities and intentions of uh, the Russian Federation and Vladimir Putin uh, over the years. So I, I don't think that when someone comes at a particular analytical conclusion that it's a result of any one factor, one skill, one set of knowledge or expertise or experience. I think it's the product of all of that. And that's certainly what I've tried to bring to bear when I have offered thoughts about the situation in Ukraine and the prospects in the future. Well, I think we are in a at a moment in time where both sides are preparing for substantial offensives, even as Russia is just pouring, relatively poorly trained and poorly equipped, and I think probably poorly led and poorly supported uh, conscripts into what is a meat grinder outside Bakhmut and in the surrounding areas where they're taking colossal losses. And it reflects the seeming unconcern of those, at least in the Kremlin, for the magnitude of these losses. Um, you know, I have often noted that the war in Ukraine will end when President Putin recognizes that the war is not sustainable, neither on the battlefield, where the losses are already probably now some nine times what they were in nearly a decade in Afghanistan, just in the first year in Ukraine, and also on the home front because of the damage done to the Russian economy by financial, economic, and personal sanctions and export controls and decisions by Western companies, well over 1,200 of them now, to either leave Russia completely or to reduce their operations in Russia. But I can't predict when that will happen. What I do advocate is that we should provide everything we can to Ukraine in terms of arms, ammunition, and other forms of security assistance and economic and humanitarian assistance to hasten the day when Russia recognizes that this is unsustainable on the battlefield and do everything we can to tighten the sanctions and export controls and other measures to bring home to Russia the fact that they need to stop this war because of what it's doing to their economy as well. It's already probably put the economy back at least a decade, if not more. And the, then the effects of this will linger 
uh, for many years, if not actually a decade or, or decades. Um, but what we should watch for is certainly a Russian offensive, perhaps around the anniversary of the uh, invasion last year on the 24th of February, uh, and also uh, then in May or June, a substantial Ukrainian offensive that will feature the Western tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, longer range precision munitions, additional uh, artillery pieces and artillery ammunition, uh, and achieve combined arms effect. In other words, not just tanks, but also tanks with infantry, with engineers, with explosive ordnance disposal, with artillery to suppress the enemy, uh, mortars, close air support if they have it, rotary and fixed wings, uh, electronic warfare to jam the enemy's communications, uh, and all with logistics pushed up to support it as, as effectively as is possible. That's going to be a very, very pivotal moment. And I hope that the assistance that we have provided in the most recent decisions that have been made in that regard can enable Ukraine ultimately to cut the land bridge that Russia has established between Russia proper and Crimea and then to isolate Crimea further using the longer range precision munitions now that will stretch out to 150 kilometers, um, and then perhaps maybe even longer over time, and perhaps uh, take out the Kerch Strait Bridge once and for all completely as well. Well, I think the, the big takeaway from Vietnam, the biggest strategic takeaway was that the war was no longer sustainable for the United States. Um, it wasn't sustainable on the home front in particular, um, we, either with domestic political opinion, popular opinion, support in Congress, which had eroded completely and ultimately precluded the U.S. from supporting the South Vietnamese when the final offensive was launched by the North, and then in a variety of other ways. Economically, it was quite ruinous for the U.S. Uh, as well. It set off an era of very substantial inflation that wasn't really dealt with until the early 1980s. There's another lesson, which is that the U.S. didn't get the approach right. We didn't get the big ideas right about what needed to be done. In other words, that we needed to support local security forces and establishment. In other words, a counterinsurgency, civil military comprehensive campaign, rather than one that focused on establishing a South Vietnamese army that looked like ours and was more useful for repelling a Korean War kind of invasion from North Vietnam than dealing with, again, insurgents, paramilitary, um, political uh, cells that were all linked to the Viet Cong, uh, and also certainly dealing with North Vietnamese forces as they came in as well. We intend instead really focused on the big war, uh, search and destroy operations, which had some important achievements, 